Would you imagine, for instance, a gentleman went to, to, to uh, the dentist to remove a bad tooth. He went with his wife. The driver took them there. But it was his dead body that came out. My Lord. Just to remove a tooth. Apparently, he reacted like adversely oh, to anesthesia. Oh. It's to tell you how unpredictable life is, yeah. how transient it is. Yeah. And the sooner each one of us individually got the reality of it, mm -hmm. that it could be time up at any point in time, mm -hmm. the better for us all. Then we would do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, at this job, what we started to do is that for young people about to get married, we have a manual um, and one of the chapters, pre-marriage counseling, one of the chapters is on estate planning mm. for young couples. So that right from inception, yeah, they can plan so with the viewpoint of information, mm. the right information. Yes. When you're buying properties, you know the right names to buy in. Yes. You know what to do and what not to do. You know what is detrimental to you. For instance, you want to buy land. And you buy the name of Mr. and Mrs. Egbedina. What have you done? Nothing. Because there could be hundreds of Mr. Mrs. Egbedina. Yeah, there could Mrs. be hundreds of Mrs. Egbedina. So who, who in particular is neither here nor there? Yet again, it is also wrong to buy in the name of, let's say, Mr. and Mrs. Michael Egbedina. It's a little better than the first, but it's still not good enough. Because, yes, okay, maybe there's one Mr. Michael Egbedina. But which Mrs. are we talking about? Which Mrs. Egbedina? Could be his second wife. How can that come? Even for those in a monogamous marriage, you could have had a wife who died. Married another. Mm. If I have a case of somebody who has had three wives, wow. serially, one wow. died, he married another. Wow. The second died, he married another. Wow. The third. Wow. You know, so when you say Mr. and Mrs. Mike wow. Egbertina, you have not done too well. Mm. It could be any of the Mrs. Mm. And imagine the first one had three children. Mm. The second one had two children. Mm. The third one had five children. Mm. It becomes very confusing. Very. So it is necessary. I wish I could enforce it. I wish I could make it compulsory that everyone should plan his estate. But it's a matter of a choice. Mm. It's your choice. Mm. But the choices we make today yeah. will determine our tomorrow. So it is a necessary choice to make now. All right. So going proper into the book, what is a will? When I write a will, does it mean I have a lot of things to give away? Or does it mean I have very little? Because many people have the opinion, for you to write a will, you must have properties, lots of uh, assets, and all of that. So what is a will? And how much property do I need to have to be able to say I want to embark on that? Okay, thank you. Yes, I hear that all over the place. I don't have anything. What do I have? Mm -hmm. I earn a salary yeah. or I have a small business. Yeah. There's nothing to give up. Mm -hmm. But people, most of the time we are wrong. Mm -hmm. What is a will? A will is a last testament. A will is a document that tells where you want your property to go mm -hmm. when you are gone. Mm -hmm. A will is you speaking from the grave. A will is you enforcing what you want about the property you have labored to well, put together. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is a will. It's something that takes effect at death. Mm -hmm. When a person is no longer there mm -hmm. and ordinarily you cannot speak from the grave, mm -hmm. but that document speaks on your behalf mm -hmm. even when the person is gone. Mm -hmm. That is what a will is. It is the most common and probably the cheapest way of, you know, distributing your property. There are many other estate planning tools or vehicles, mm -hmm. but the wheel is most common. And very accessible. Oh, yes. And it's, it's quite, it's, 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 not, it's inexpensive. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Though usually it will depend on how much property you have. Most of the time, lawyers will tell you, okay, that we work out a percentage of the value okay, of, the of what you own. Yes. And oh. of course, that percentage is negotiable. Oh. Oh. Yes. Because, but, yes. Sorry, ma'am. Because many people may think, oh, I need, I, I, I will have to pay a lawyer to write a will, and they're probably, they are probably thinking they will need to dip their hands in their pockets at that time. So it's possible to negotiate from the estate after the person's passing. Uh, no, no, that is not what I meant. Okay. You pay the lawyer immediately for that service. For that service. Oh, okay. There is another service that a lawyer could also take on okay. after death. Oh which is that of the executor of mm, the, will. the will. An executor is somebody who carries out the will mm. when that the testator is gone. Mm. A testator is the person who wrote, who wrote his will. will yeah. So after he's gone, he has actually listed in that will who and who will implement the decisions he has taken in the will. Okay. Yes. So there are two roles. You pay the lawyer immediately okay. for the drafting of the of will. The will. And for lodging the will. Okay. It's one thing to have it drafted. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to have it lodged mm -hmm. at the appropriate probate registry. Mm. A probate registry is a part of the high court of a, a state. Every state has the state high court. Okay. Yes. And every high court has a probate registry. Probate registries are the, uh, the, the part of... Um, the High Court, where everything that has to do with your wills, your letters of administration, for those who do not have a will, where all of these things are processed, where the will will be read out when it is time, and so on, where you can process certified true copies of the will, and so on. So there is a specialization, a specialized unit of the High Court called the probate registry. That is where the will is lodged. So I can't write a will and keep it somewhere in my house? You can, however, that may be problematic mm -hmm. in the sense that you're leaving it open to whether they discover it or not, okay. your beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. You're leaving it open to chance, mm -hmm. open to destruction, mm -hmm. open trade. to forgery, uh, alteration, mm. all of that. But once it is at the probate registry, you can you don't have access to it. Okay. However, it's good to have a copy uh, in the house, maybe okay. in your strong box or in your safe. Yes. Yeah. yes, you could have one there. Your lawyer, of course, will have a copy as well. Mm. If you wish, you could also place a copy with any of the trust companies. Okay. And there's so many. Every Most of the banks have a trust company. Union trustees, okay. uh, first trustees, Stambik IBTC trustees, we have all of those. They can also take custody of the will for a fee. Oh. They can also act as corporate executors. Mm. Yes. So all of that, there is so much information that most people do not know mm. that this exists. So, what, so you are asking, yeah. what if I feel I don't have much? Yes. Now, I, I, I'd like to debunk that. A lot of people assume they don't have much. I, I just earn a salary. But do you know that even for a salary earner, you very likely have your pension account. Mm, true. Contributory pension is yes. paid by every employer, yes. should be paid by every employer. True. And those are remitted on a monthly basis mm -hmm. to your PFA, Pension Funds Administrator. Yeah. Now, Everyone, hopefully, out there, everyone checks that his account is being funded. You can always check your balances. Mm. So if it is being funded, then you'd realize it's building up. It's yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. Yes. Mm. The last time you checked, I'm sure you'll be talking of millions mm. of Naira. Mm. <laughs> and you don't have access yes. to it. You don't have access to it till you're 50 mm. and you're out of job. Oh. If you are 50 and you're out of job, you have access to about 25%, sometimes 50%. What happens to the rest? The rest would be until you retire. Oh. When you retire, then you receive a monthly pension. Okay. That's what we, when we talk about pensioners. Okay. Yes, there's something from that fund that they receive on a monthly basis. Okay. 
but it should run out at some point, or does the government support it? Well, um, will it run out at some point? Probably. Pro maybe, maybe not. But um, the higher your level at work, the more that is being pumped in there. Yeah. But there's a limit to which you can access on a monthly basis when you retire. Yes, it's a proportion. So they keep giving you something to sustain you for life. If there's a balance left at the time the person transits, mm. then the family would have recourse to that. Okay. Or the beneficiaries. Okay. So you have your salary. You probably have life assurance. Mm -hmm. In many establishments, you have uh, life assurance for the staff, mm. employee life assurance, mm. and so on. Now, if you are not an employee and you have a business, you have a business. That's something that could run through the generations. Mm -hmm. Your business is something that your beneficiaries could take over could take at over. some time. Right. So there's always something to give away. To give away. Okay. So we have been listening to Madame Titiola Debile and she has been putting us through how we will put our house in order before our person. No, no, no. Nobody's going to die. Not yet by God's grace. But we just need to prepare for the reality. We'll go on a short break and when we come back, we'll continue this discussion. Stay with us.